when it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go! Good evening, Brendan Rogers has been handed a two-match ban, one of them suspended following his incompetence comments following Celtic's defeat at Hearts a few weeks ago. That means he'll miss this weekend against Livingston, but he'll be in the dugout for the game at Rangers on the 7th of April with us a former Rangers star Jamie Murphy and a late substitute today because John Hartson is poorly not because of the result the other night for Wales it was cruel oh, for them dear. but Andy you were in on Tuesday you're back tonight first up though what about Brendan Rodgers uh, effectively a one match ban the suspended one till the end of the season if uh, anything else happens yeah Celtic took it really seriously they went in with a lawyer but I just feel as though we're missing the bigger picture here the bigger picture in my view is the way that uh, VAR has been used. Uh, it's got, whether Brendan Rodgers is in the dugout or not, it's almost immaterial. You're hearing, um, you know, Motherwell, uh, Commander, Kibbs, Hearts, Celtic in that game, and surely every club has got an issue with the way VAR has been handled. The ridiculous interpretation, the lack of consistency in the application of some of the laws of the game. I think that's the bigger story. Celtic are accepting it. They're not going to complain. I think if it was a two-match ban, immediately he would miss the game with Rangers. And that could have been, we heard Peter Grant saying last night on the programme, there could be all sorts of conspiracy theories about why he would not be in the dugout. That has cleared the way. That's not going to be an issue now. Yeah, you, you'll yeah. never get away from conspiracy theories yeah. in Glasgow. And you'll <laughs> maybe get one next week. Yeah. But... Um, no, I, I thought the, the bigger story was... Uh, I mean, the, the refereeing in that game, the actual on-field refereeing, you know, giving Celtic a penalty was bad enough. That was a ridiculous yeah. decision. But everything else I thought was OK. And it was the it was the VAR ref that uh, caught all the headlines. And it's caught all the headlines far too often. You hear it from almost every manager. And yet... Everyone seems to be buying into it and I'm just amazed that they're all putting up with it. Yes, Stuart Kettlewell in the news today, he's called for serious talks between his club, Motherwell, and match officials and other clubs after being left in the dark over two VAR calls against Aberdeen and two calls that meant, well, could have meant they lost, they did lose the game and they could have been top six, whereas they're, uh, well, they're unlikely to be there. It's tough. Jamie, you're at Air United now, so VAR is not an issue for you normally. But what do you think about it? Are you surprised the clubs don't come together to say where's the light touch that we were promised and it doesn't seem to be the case yeah I think that's the way forward the clubs have got to get together and go to the SFA and say look we are not happy with this it's costing us points on a Saturday it's costing people wins it's costing people money so something has to be done but I think that's the only way that, that things are going to change after the international the other night Andy you were on just beforehand great build up with Stephen McGinn but we didn't see that coming did we <laughs> No, I mean, I thought we played ever so well for, what, 60, 70 minutes against Holland and then we were really poor. I mean, always awful against Northern Ireland. And to be fair to them, they played it like a cup final. They were steaming into tackles. They were giving it everything. And, um, you know, they, they had a game plan that worked for them, but uh, our record in friendlies is just uh, awful. So... Uh, roll on the the important games in the summer. Yeah, I was glad to hear that. We've won 15 out of 21 qualifying games, as you know, um, and we've only won two out of 19 friendlies. You do say then, well, why bother? But I, I know you have to play and you, you want to uh, give them game time together. Yeah, th that's a good thing about the Nations League that's came in. It's mm -hmm. made all the games competitive. You know, you can tell us a bit more on it other than just, you know, when you play a friendly, as much as it's your country, it's not going to be top level performances I don't think I think you need that competition you need something to play for which they haven't had over the last couple of games it's still disappointing results but that's one of the reasons why What's happening with John Lundstrom? Any insight? We know that the Turkish club trap sponsor are in for him they're in for Barisic as well apparently it's been uh, mooted in recent weeks is he on his way over there and John Lundstrom's been one of the standouts this season? I think Rangers will be looking 
to keep him as much as he can. Mm. You know, money and everything comes into play, but he's probably been the standout performer for me since uh, Clemence came into the to the club. He's one that kind of holds the middle of the pitch for Rangers. He lets others go forward. He does a bit of everything. So I think if if you want to improve as Rangers, you want to keep players like John Lundstrom around. Not the easiest one to say. I find Trab on spore. <laughs> I'm hoping he's done that. That's, that's terrible. Uh, let's get a, a big Rangers fan on the line. It's Paul. Paul, good evening. Uh, evening, Paul. Um, evening, guys. Thanks for having me on your show tonight. Pleasure. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi. Hi uh, um, I just. I've just got my puppies worth in there just obviously Go on. Kind of into the show today and hearing that about um, the outcome for the Brendan Rodgers um, trial or whatever you want to call it um, I, I just you know I, from my point of view I'm probably talking about both his specs or I'll admit that right but from my point of view he kind of looks at it as an easy way out for the SFA right we'll, we'll, we'll basically give him 50-50 here we'll, we'll give him the one match suspended but we know the disrespect to Livingston that, that's the game that, aye, okay, you missed that game, but you're, you're back for the, the big one of the old firm. I mean, you know, as well as just, in my view, just no giving me any bad. I mean, it's a waste of time. But I, I, I do hope that you talk about far and consistency. I hope there's consistency with comments from managers. And I don't just mean for like Clement and that. Any other manager that says the same as what Brendan said, that he said the word incompetent, which is apparently against the, the SFA rulebook, I hope if it happens to a certain individual for anyone else, the same treatment applies to him as well then, because well, was there anything coming out as to why it was a one match suspended and why it wasn't the two matches given? What, what was the rationale for that then? Well, we don't know what was said in the, in the, the meeting, uh, Paul, but um, you know, I think I think when you get a two-game ban, I, I think there's a way to speak about referees, and I think Brendan Rodgers, he's got so many games under his belt, he admitted himself he doesn't usually talk uh, about referees, and he knew what he was doing by using the word incompetent, and the, the rule applies to you know inferring uh, incompetence, inferring some sort of bias, and that will get you um, a ban. So if any, if any other manager was to use... Uh, those words, I'm sure uh, they would get the same uh, punishment. But I don't know. I mean, the SFA should not be standing for either Celtic or Rangers throwing manager uh, throwing uh, referees mm. under the bus. And when Rangers did it with Willie Collum and Celtic did it with John Beaton, if you're the SFA, the first thing you should do is as soon as possible get Willie Collum on a Rangers game as soon as possible get John Beaton on a Celtic game and um, you know I think the, res the referees have had awful guidance really awful the interpretation of the, the handball for example has been so inconsistent utterly baffling and when you see some of the the amount of clubs now that are unhappy with the way that we are using VAR I cannot believe that they all don't get together and do something about it. This yeah. idea of Brendan Rodgers being suspended for one or two games, it's really not the bigger story here, yeah. in my yeah. view. It's a red herring. Paul, I think so. We'll come back in a minute or two. Derek's on a big Rangers fan. Hi, Derek. Hi, Paul. Hi, panel. I think Evening. John Beaton should resign. I think John Beaton should resign in protest of the disgusting way he's been treated. Because he wasn't the referee. Brendan Rodgers mentioned John Beaton to appease the Moonhowlers at his club. He knew if I knew what he was doing with John Beaton. He should be out of the hammer for it. And John Beaton should resign in protest of a disgraceful one-match ban. That's an insult. Well, I hope John he does. Beaton should just immediately resign. I hope he doesn't resign, Derek. Um, we've got a decent group of referees and I think they're having a shocking time with their interpretation of our... Uh, I'll go back to the on-field decisions of Don Robertson that day. The only one I would take issue with would would have been the, the Celtic penalty that was um, that they got. I just didn't think it was a penalty. It was so incredibly soft. But you know that would have been one poor decision in, in 90 minutes. And yet we were told there's going to be a really light touch from VAR. We won't get involved when the referees already made a call. And you see it time and time again. Every single club was sold a dummy and I, I can't believe they put up with it. And 
Eric. Eric. Yeah, on you go, Paul. Um, so, Andy, you know, there's a lot of time getting spent as far and how far problematic it is, but I would miss the point here. Does that give Brendan Rodgers the entitlement to, as Derek said, there to call out named individuals and also, not to avoid the red term in the room here, but he broke the rules of the SFA. So, and he's yeah, been punished. Problematic. Yeah. You get all of that. Well, but, but, as, but the punishment is too much bad. Would you want for him? Do you want a ten-match ban then, Paul? Because you don't like Brendan no, Rodgers. No, 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 you don't. You often want to go. What's that? How many games do you want then? How many would you go for? If you were on the SFA panel, Paul, how many would you uh, give Brendan Rodgers? Am I right saying? I could be wrong. No, you're not wrong. You know you're not wrong. You're right. How many would you give? And I say that because you do come on and whatever we talk about, you bring it back to Brendan Rodgers. Because Paul, he's broke the rules in this. The the refereeing, the VAR, the the VAR official had an off day. Everyone knows that. The Celtic penalty was wrong. Yang was a yellow card. Iwata should never have been sent off. And where is the where's the soft touch that was supposed to be not involved? You know, rolling back the tape so that they look. Derek, I, I'm I'm not in agreement with any. Derek, hang on a second, Derek. I'm not in agreement with any manager throwing a referee under the bus yeah. the way that Brendan Rodgers did there. He pointed out the incompetence of of John Beaton. I think more generally, you should point out the incompetence of the use of VAR from so many referees. Why are they being guided to give some of these baffling decisions? And, you know, Rangers did it uh, a few months back when they called out Willie Collum. And I can't believe he hasn't been given a Rangers game since. He should have been given a Rangers game um, I think, you know, they got their United game. Did he? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That that is the way yeah. to handle it when you get uh, when you get called out like that. Yeah. And I know that the SFA pulled Rangers up for that, in much the same way that they pulled Brendan Rodgers up for his comments. Um, we we need to get a better place. Look at every single club talking about VAR being unhappy with it. That is the bigger picture, in my view, and not whether. Brendan Rodgers gets to sit out one, two, or whatever, how many games? I'm going I'm to stick up for the SFA here and say that that's a couple of times they've handed out suspended bans, so I don't feel like this is just targeting Brendan Rodgers. Uh, but I think the Scottish FA is doing what they can, and they've done it a few times. Caldwell, Robin Nielsen, they've both had suspended bans as well, so I don't think this can be put down to just a Rangers-Celtic thing. Good bit of insight there. Well, you... Yeah, Derek... Uh, Paul, Paul, you say that uh, VR had a shocker that day. VR only can assist the referee and advise him to have a look at it. The referee is the decision's final. So I don't know why John Beaton's name was called out. Is it because he's allegedly a Rangers supporter? You think that's why you mentioned his name on purpose? Absolutely not. I don't think that comes into anyone's... Well, I would hope that that wouldn't come into anyone's thinking uh, in the SFA. And, you know, as much as we like to, to slag referees or people like to have comments on them, I'd definitely don't think there's any bias in any referees in Scotland no, I think it would be pretty yeah. easy to see yeah. I think and, and decisions I agree. both ways and Andy Walker you agree I agree yeah. wholeheartedly yeah. and so do I they've been told Derek to look back at things it was supposed to be Andy you were there what was it clear and obvious errors that yeah. wasn't a clear and obvious error it, the, minimum the interference yank. maximum benefit a light touch yeah. whatever way you want to describe it we won't get involved if it's just a case of a different opinion what we're going to clear up is sometimes, occasionally, my God, you've got that decision so badly wrong, go over and have another look at it. And yet we are creating more uh, controversy. We are looking for ways to disallow goals. We are looking for ways to send players off. I can't believe we're all, when I say we, all the clubs, I can't believe they are all accepting this uh, guidance that the referees have been given and, and how to use VAR. Right, guys, thanks for the call. Laurie's on as well. Derek, you're still there. Laurie, good evening. Hi, good evening, uh, panel. Uh, I think the big issue here has to be VAR. Uh, that should be, you know, under scrutiny. Uh, 
You know, call us on here. I'm not going to personalize things. No. Look into exact retribution against Brendan Rodgers uh, because they're Rangers fans. Uh, the same individuals were conspicuously silent by their absence uh, when Rangers Football Club uh, insisted and demanded that Wally Collum be exempted from officiating at their games. So let's all reduce this to tribalism and parochialism. Yeah. Let's look at the big picture. Laurie, you're dead right. That is the bigger picture. And um, we're, we're hearing it again from Stuart Kettlewell tonight. I mean, he made, I thought, some really serious comments after the game against Aberdeen. And yet apparently he's had, um, they've been left in the dark over those two calls. They're, they're, they're no further forward. They haven't had any dialogue as far as we know. And he's not the only one. Um, you know, I, I've spoken to managers at Hearts and Hibs post-match interviews, absolutely scathing about VAR. Derek McInnes has done it at Kilmarnock, Dave Martindale at Livingston. Um, this is this is not good, mm. and unless <coughs> excuse me, unless you address it, I mean, we're getting into the final yep. weeks of the season, the real business end of the season. I think you're looking at a case where it's. It's pretty much nailed on that we're going to have a shocking decision that may well have a, a, a huge bearing on a relegation, European or title issue. We're just seeing the Awata moment on telly just now on Sky. And Jamie, when you look at it, IFAB are throwing everybody under the bus by changing the handball rules over recent years because nobody knows exactly when it's... It should be a penalty or where it shouldn't. It's accidental or whether you're trying to gain an advantage. Again, it comes down to the interpretation of the rules. Yeah. Like you said, they've changed that many times. It's hard to kind of keep up with what they're, what they're saying, what the new rules are. And if it's hard for us to keep up, I'm sure it's hard for the referees sometimes to keep up. So, like, and, and I get the point you were saying, but when teams start bringing out statements on referees, I'm not a fan. And the, the football should be played out in the pitch. Yeah. I get that the referee has a bearing on the game. But it's not the full bearing on the game. So I think there's a bit of appeasing fans when you put a statement out there uh, mm. to make it look like you're really, really annoyed by the decision. But you've, you've got to be disappointed in your own performance if you lose a game, first and foremost. Yeah. And Andy, uh, John Beaton is being put under pressure by whoever it is that's telling them to look back for these things. Because the referee thought, take whichever one you want. It was a yellow card, let's say, for Yang. Why did they go back? He must be getting told, look for every single possible thing. Listen, I, I think one of the important things here is uh, transparency. Yeah. And if we can, I mean, referees will do a job every week, but they can't keep going back to it every week if they keep making absolute howlers. I mean, down south, you will get horrible mistakes, but the following week, they're not doing any of the big games. There's an accountability there. All the refs want to do the big games. Uh, they want to be in the Scottish Premiership and there is no accountability. You can do whatever you want and we've already seen pictures of referees who clearly have been like the rabbit caught in the headlights. They don't want to make a decision. I'll wait until VAR tell me what to do. That's unacceptable. Laurie, final thought? My final thought, Paul, is that it seems that so many of the shows this season mm -hmm. I have centred around I, VAR yeah. a decisions, etc., when we should be concentrating on the quality of players on the pitch. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it's sad, it's regrettable. Uh, I am not a fan of VAR. Uh, it has stymied the game. It has detracted and demeaned uh, the game. Uh, and I think that we should take a serious look at it, VAR and where we go going forward. Thanks, Laurie. Thanks, Paul. And thanks also to Derek, who were on. Celtic have issued a statement in the last few moments. Clearly, we are disappointed with the outcome of today's hearing, although we will accept the panel's decision. The manager appeared at the hearing today and his defence was presented robustly and thoroughly. Like many other clubs, this is Celtic statement, say we will continue to press for the highest standards in relation to the VAR process in Scottish football. I mean, but to be clear... We know that people are trying to do their best. You know, the referees, the VAR officials. I think from the top, there isn't strong enough leadership, strong That's true. enough guidance. That's true. And I, 
you know, I think it's, it's in world football, Andy. It's, it, it's all over. They were talking about it in Talk Sport this morning. Oh, and Simon Jordan giving them pelters. He said, who are these people at IFAB keep changing the beautiful game? They keep changing things. And it's not being... Do, nobody do, knows how to interpret it. The only it. thing I would say against yeah. that, Paul, yeah. sorry, Jamie, oh, no. is the World Cup was very well refereed yeah. because they, they were putting on a show. All, all the, the best players in the world were there. Let's try and keep them on the pitch. Let's raise the threshold for a foul, for a yellow card, for a red... And I thought, because of that, the standard of refereeing was really good. Now, we had no Scottish referees involved. And I know they all want to be involved mm. at the big tournaments. And that's absolutely the way it should be. They should have their, their, their own ambition. They're not going to be getting involved under the current guidelines. Uh, sometimes I think it's forgotten that Scottish referees aren't full-time. I mean, mm. in all these other countries, England, they're mm. full-time. They've got a base they go to Monday to Friday. Mm. Uh, they meet get every two done. weeks all of them every they all come weeks. together and yeah. they talk about their decisions and yeah. what was right and what was wrong mm. now I don't know what happens in Scotland I just know that they're part time referees and yeah. they have other jobs mm. and other commitments which is fine but personally I think if, if a referee's full time they get more time to do it they more time to know what's happening it would definitely improve the standard of refereeing in Scotland quick break and then we're back on the lines are red hot tonight the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! Going back on the lines, the news that Brendan Rodgers has got a two-match ban, one of them suspended, so he will miss Livingston against Celtic this Sunday. Rangers play Hibs on Saturday as a full card this weekend. It's back to the domestic football and don't we know that the calls are going uh, crazy? Going to Justin in a moment or two, but Connor, you've been wedding in Cumbernauld. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Paul. And, uh, Hello there. Gents, how you doing? Hi, good, thanks. So, Hi, what's in your mind tonight? Yeah, well, listen, firstly, I, I just want to say in the, the Brendan Rodgers um, touchline ban, you know, I, I, I like to think I'm a fair person when I come on here, and, and I actually think that the SFA have made the right decision today. Um, I think it's a great thing to do because, you know, the first thing to remember is it is a two game ban. It's, it's a one game immediate ban, one is suspended, and that means if he breaches again, that ban automatically kicks in, and he can obviously still then be brought up for that breach as well. So, you know, it, it still does kind of prevent him, you'd think, from, from going on and doing that again, uh, certainly this season. Um, but also, I think you've got to look at the, the wider picture and that the SFE had, have obviously had a delicate balance to, to try and meet here, and, and I don't readily defend them, but if they had handed him an immediate two-match ban or a three- or four-match ban, and he's banned for the, the old yeah. firm next week at Ibrox and other games, the, the uproar and the, the tension and the heat that they'd have created by doing that, you know, it just wouldn't have been a, a, a good thing to do. Uh, it would have poured petrol over the fire that doesn't need and you know all the different narratives could have been spun yeah. and I think what they've done is they've taken a more sensible and balanced approach it still does you know punish him if you will for yeah. what he did because I think what he said was wrong and sort of puts that leash on him for the remainder of the season unless he wants to serve the other band and I think it sort of ticks the boxes in that okay. aspect but is he lucky yes because I think on another day if it hadn't been that game next week who knows he might have had the immediate two match ban, but ultimately, given the circumstances, I can't, I can't say that it is not the right decision. Jimmy Murphy, yeah, I'm with you. I yeah. think common sense has prevailed. Uh, we've got probably the biggest game in the league season coming up mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks, and you want your managers of both teams on the sideline. You want both teams performing at, at their best. It's it's our game. We want to promote it to the to the rest of the world, who's probably going yep. to be watching. Mm -hmm. So we want to make it as good as possible. So I think. Yeah, he's been he's been suspended the one game. It's enough. We move on. We get ready for the next week. Connor, I'll come back to you. Justin's on as well, a Rangers fan. Hi, Justin. Hi, guys. How you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. What's on your mind? Is it on this? Yeah, it is a bit of both. It is now, after to listen to the last call. I would ask a question mm -hmm. of, of, of the guys. Based on the, what, what the callers just said, that it's common sense... Yeah. and the band's right, and blah, 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 right? But he's been lucky on not getting the immediate two-match ban because the old firm game's coming up. And I get Jamie saying you want your two managers in. Mm. I've heard Celtic fans saying they're, 
they don't have Celtic fans in Ibrox. The last thing they would, it would set the blue touch paper, if you like, because no fans, no manager, the sure. conspiracy theorists would go wild. Um, but in a, in a, a level playing field, we're talking about VAR and things being transparent and a level playing field for everybody. Surely that would then have to apply to everything and not just... And, and again, this isn't a Ranger Celtic thing, I'm just being in general. Surely if Brendan Rodgers has been lucky, for want of a better word, and continuously been put in place to not light that touch paper just because the old firm game's coming up, would that have happened if it was Aberdeen the following week or would that happen if it was Dundee United the following week? Or, do you but, get my point? I, I, I do. Does that seem but, like sure. a level playing field? Yeah, but the word lucky was used by... Was it, you a moment ago, Connor, and you were very measured, but you know, so Rangers fans there really measured what he said. I think he's right, but the word lucky is an interpretation. We, we've we already yeah. got a huge embarrassment when we get to Ibrox. There's going to be no away fans, yeah. and uh, a few weeks later, we'll have a game at Celtic Park. There'll be no away fans. The clubs, both clubs, are a huge embarrassment getting into that position. I wouldn't overplay. You know, the status of a manager on a match day. I mean, I, I think the probably the worst thing that Brendan Rodgers would miss will be the half-time involvement, mm. where you've obviously had your 45 minutes, you might want to tweak one or two things, but I played in old firm games where Billy McNeil sat up in the director's box and all the work that we had done in preparation for the game was done during the week. We didn't really need to look over. I remember being instructed by Roy Aitken to do something different mm. because the game was running away from us, and we, you know, we we did that for five, mm. ten, fifteen minutes before we get back into it. So, honestly, this whole one-two game ban, I think it's a non-story. Right. There's a much mm. bigger picture about VAR and the use mm. of VAR and Celtic. It would have been great if they'd come out and said, "Look, we are going to make sure we have a meeting with all the clubs." and the SFA, and the head of referees. and We're going to try and make things better. If you remember recently, Jamie, we had a situation where there were all... All the clubs were really concerned about some of these handballs, and it, mm. it, it, it seemed to work really well, I don't know, for a month, six weeks. And then we've gone back... They changed to, the interpretation. They simplified it, yeah, yeah. They, they made simplified it, it Jamie. That's and a handball, that's not a handball. Absolutely, handball. and we've gone back mm. to the madness. That, in my view, it is the much bigger story. Jamie, you're the only one here, including Connor and Justin, as far as I know, who've played in an old firm game with Brendan Rodgers up against him. And uh, you were re reminding me of it just before the programme. So he's got a good record against Rangers. Yeah, I was going to say it wasn't a good memory. No. I was reminding you of it. It was your first game. <laughs> yeah. Well, your first uh, Celtic game. 3 2 at uh, yeah. Ibrox. Yeah. But Brendan Rodgers is a really smart man. You can tell on the sideline he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing in interviews. Now, I'll, I'll ask this question back to you. Do you think he would have said what he said if he knew Rangers were the next game. It's an interesting one yeah. because uh, it happened so long ago and then they said we won't sure. be meeting until you know, whatever date, which you would then get a decision and then it's the next two games. So do you mean, was he thinking about the Rangers game? Well, I, I if, the, if the Rangers so. game was no. a weekly, I, sure. I don't think he would have said what he said. Ah, right. yeah. No, listen, yeah. he's thrown John Be he mentioned John Beaton by yes. name. He didn't mention the, the referee on the pitch, yeah. John Robertson, mm -hmm. but um, oh, yep. Listen, we, we've got a much bigger story yep. and I think this idea of Brendan Rodgers being at Ibrox or not, it, it's not the biggest story that we've got to contend with. Connor, can we take it away from it? Any other point? You've got Rangers, look, if you win on Saturday, go back to the top of the table. Yeah, well, that is obviously the big, bigger um, concern for us, absolutely. Um, and it's important to do that because obviously the Dundee game getting called off and that yeah. being rearranged... You know, it makes it more likely than not that, uh, unfortunately, we'll go into the, the old firm mm -hmm. game not at the top. That being said, if we can win on Saturday, which I'm, I'm confident we can, um, even with the, the, the injury uh, issues that have arised yeah. over the international break as well, then that adds pressure. Um, you know, Celtic going away to Livingston, who are not in great shape, but you've got to hope that maybe they can do something with Celtic's record. Almondville isn't particularly great mm -hmm. under Brendan Rodgers, so you never know um, what can happen. And, and credit to Livingston, when they went to, to Parkhead in the Cup, they certainly gave Celtic a, 
a bit of a scare. Uh, what are you thinking so, about? Any thoughts on John Lundstrom? They're saying he could be off to Turkey. Um, are you surprised? Um, I'm not surprised that there's interest. Okay. Um, personally, I'd like to keep him because I do think that he, he can add value um, to, to the team if he, if he can stay another year or two. Um, I think you can see the difference in him as a player yeah. since Philip Clements came in the door because the John Lundstrom that started this season and the one we've now got are it's almost night and day. His performance has yeah. been great. You know, mm-hmm. you know, there's still been wee moments, but that happens in games, and I think um, he can play a massive part, particularly if you know. I imagine Philip Clements going to want to bring in um, quite a number of his own players yeah. in in the summer. You still want those experienced heads around mm-hmm. the dressing room that can can help them understand what it is they're coming into, and I think he's. He's the kind of guy you'd want in that situation. So Lundstrom, I think, is in the same boat as Bona Barisic. Really good player, and you should get money for them. You should not allow them to run down their contracts. It's poor management. But that's what's happened. It's going to happen, happen. Yeah. you know, unless he listen, gets he a might new stay contract. on. Sure. And good luck to him. I think you know, listening to Barry, who obviously yeah. sees a lot more of Rangers than I do, but uh, he would Barry Ferguson would, I think, would mm. say that Lundstrom has been the. The best player since come on has gone in. I think you said that earlier as yeah, well, agreed, yeah. uh, Jamie. So, guys like that, you want to look after them, and um, you're just playing a dangerous game, allowing any player, especially one in such good form, to go to the end of their contract and have their pick of clubs. Justin, what's your feeling about John Lindstrom? Uh, I, I, I'm maybe slightly in agreement in the fact that it, with the other caller, he, he was. I, I, a shadow of the player that we'd seen at the start of the season. I, I think it's not surprising that he's coming to the end of his contract and all of a sudden he's turned into you know, a midfield <laughs> general and covering every blade of the grass uh, over the last few months, but he's still prone to errors. I think he gets a wee bit carried away with, with where he sits sometimes, which can be problematic when he loses the ball. But very much in agreement. We've already lost Kent away for no money, uh, which was a big investment for Rangers. Yeah, we get years out of them, but we get no money back from Los Morelos for nothing to our biggest players. I think, you know, if if we get the right money for Lundstrom, I don't think he's irreplaceable. I think at the moment, the thing that impresses me about Clement is he doesn't seem to get emotionally attached. And the last thing I would want to do is, from a fan's point of view, is, is get emotionally attached mm. to players. And the way we maybe used to, you know, players finishing their careers at Rangers or yeah. and that kind of thing, or the old firm. I think if there's a, a value there for the player, and we need to move on, we, ja- we need constantly we need to improve. Jimmy, I think the silver lining with Lundstrom is that he was signed for nothing. So do you resign yourself to losing him for nothing at the end of the season if you didn't pay anything for him in the first place? I think Ryan Kent was a bit different. They, they paid a few million or whatever it was for him, and then lost him. Uh, but I think you can forgive the club for this one although I do think that he would help Rangers next year and possibly the year after that Andy common sense there I think from Connor Connor any final thought from you? Um, no I just I agree okay. the point about finances obviously if you get a decent amount of money and you've got to take it because we have to be fair um, missed out on a number of players in the last few years um, particularly by Ross Wilson who we didn't get really any money for because those contracts were allowed to, to run down and and that's not necessarily a sound business model so obviously we need to make sure that we're, we're cautious in that um, and, and, and listen obviously the best way to ensure that you get good finances is to win the league because there's a massive pot of money at the end of that rainbow um, if you can get to the, the finish line so that's that's the concentration obviously but um, I'm sure come the summer we'll see a fair a fair bit of movement because it will be the first proper chance that come on to had to, to really uh, assert himself on the on, on the squad and, and bring in his his players. Andy, it is going to be fascinating. The next, what, six weeks, two months, yeah. two top managers, Philippe Clement, Brendan Rodgers, and the tactical noose, the motivation. Yeah, yeah and Connor, I think, makes a good point about uh, Philippe Clement having yeah. an opportunity to really cement his place as the Rangers manager, shaping up his own team. It's another transfer window. Um and it remains to be seen what they will have to spend. Clearly, the difference, if you actually win the title, um, that will give them a, a much bigger budget than, uh, obviously, if they don't. The, 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 the riches on offer for this title, um, it's never been as high 
and that's why everyone is is on tender hooks for it. Justin, thanks so much for the call. You too, Connor. Oh eight oh eight seventeen seventeen seven hundred. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call oh one four one three seven four zero four zero nine. Let's go. It's Paul Cooney, Jimmy Murphy, and Andy Walker. Two blades, of course, because uh, both spent quite a time at Sheffield United. Huge weekend in England as well, not least uh, Man City against Arsenal. Brilliant. Top of the t- well, we're not, not, sadly, the, the blades look yeah. as though they're going to be relegated. Yeah, I don't think they'll make it. It's been a tough season. For Just a, a bridge too far, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. That step up, too Just, much, and yeah. uh, they'll get the parachute payments and uh, try and come back again next season. They're a real yo-yo club at the moment. Yeah, they're up and they're down. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, they can get back down and get back up. Yeah. Chris, Chris Welder, would you keep him? Yeah, he's came yeah. in halfway through the season. It's yeah. been too difficult mm-hmm. for them to stay up this year, so. Hopefully he gets another chance next year. He's got a track record of taking them out of the Championship, hasn't he, back up to the Premiership. Uh, Your game this weekend, Jamie, disappointing you lost last weekend from your point of view, 2-1, but big game this weekend. Yeah, Friday night, uh, Friday night football. One of the good things about playing in the Championship, so hopefully we can get that win, uh, push us back up the table. Against Airdrie tomorrow night, but you're at home, of course. And well done, Airdrie, winning the the Cup. Really pleased for... Really pleased for Callum Gallagher, who's one of the, the players there. He's a good friend of my son's, and uh, he's been in and out of the team, but he's got a good number of goals and a great experience always just to, to get a trophy. I see Nathan Patterson, Scotland fullback, ex Rangers at Everton. He said this is the most difficult period of his career after being, well, he's on the fringes really at Everton. And you could see the other night, he, he looked short of confidence, didn't he, at times, Jamie? Um, and obviously the goal that came, it looked as though he got us out of trouble and uh, it wasn't to be. He needs to play more, I would think. Yeah, that's what he'll be thinking. I know it's difficult at Everton. You've got world-class players yeah. in the Premier League every week and you're not playing. There can be that little bit of confidence comes in. Uh, and he's just looking for a chance down there and he wants to play. He wants to be in that Scotland squad for the summer. Making a mistake the other night doesn't help that, but... I think he's done enough over the past couple of years to be included in that squad. I think he's got a lot to offer mm-hmm. and I think he maybe the best bet was get away from Everton, mm-hmm. go and play uh, at whatever club. He could easily, I'm sure, go out on loan and get his game back. You know, when he, when he first, first broke into the Rangers team, he was exciting, things were happening, he was energetic. Uh, he's got all that in his game and just better decision making. He can, he can get a, a good game back, but... I'm not sure it's going to be at Everton. And I see Lewis Ferguson saying that um, uh, it's so tough getting into the midfield at the moment. He, we know he's on fire in Italy. We all know the story. But the competition for places is so tight. Were you surprised, Andy, that he didn't play from the yeah, start? I, well, I thought he would have got a bit, uh, more game time yeah. in, the, in the two games in much the same way as I thought maybe one of the other goalkeepers might yeah. have got um, a bit of game time. But... Uh, you know, you have to credit Stevie Clark and what he's done for yeah. Scotland. And if he's if he's already in the zone for uh, the the Euros kicking off in the summer, who knows what's going to happen in the friendlies with Gibraltar and yeah. uh, Finland? But um, uh, he might just be in the zone and he's he's concentrating on the players that uh, will, will start the game against Germany. I think Ferguson made a little bit of difference when he came on yeah. in the game the other night. Got a lot to offer. Yeah. He's got a bit. Yeah. about him he's doing well at the time mm-hmm. and like we're talk- just talking about Patterson not having confidence mm-hmm. he obviously does have the confidence and you want all your players to be at that level so it's good to see him coming on even though he's probably disappointed he's not started any of the games and, and he's came on and made an impact you'll have played against him did your paths cross yeah he was, he, he, was a, he was a young player when he was at Hamilton I think the first time I played against him uh, and you can you can tell when you look at someone on the pitch mm-hmm. or you're playing against them that they're a half decent player and they've still got a little bit to go obviously at that time he was mm-hmm. I think it was maybe 18 playing for Hamilton, but you know the potential was there and he's, he's gone on to fulfil that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember him at Hamilton as well, Paul, mm-hmm. and it was a good spot from Aberdeen just to go and pick him up. And Derek McInnes, I think, maybe developed his game. He became really important for Aberdeen. He was a goal-scoring midfield player and he's gone on to uh, you know, take it a step further. So uh, all credit to him. Here's Stevie Clark, because apparently now they're talking about... We know it's a 23-man squad, but... Remember, after COVID for 2021, they increased it 
and there's a, quite a lobby to say it should be more than 23 for player welfare. He wasn't speaking about that the other day, but he spoke about the game and the 1 0 defeat to Northern Ireland. Yeah, okay, decent. Uh, moved the ball. Probably had to create a little bit more in the final third. We had a lot of the ball. Played against a very good, well organised Northern Ireland team. They got the, the deflection for the goal, gives them, a, gives them a platform to defend even more than what they were before. And they were good on the night, and we didn't didn't quite create enough to get the, the goals back. And what did he learn about his players? Sometimes in the bad moments you learn more. You know, I think you, you learn a lot about your players, you learn a lot about your team. You, you look at what, what you're going to do in the summer and it's time for us to peak is in June. Jamie, you'd be watching it keenly the other night. What, did, what do you think about that game? How do you reflect on it? I think the biggest takeaway I take from it is that Scotland kind of had, they have to do better when they're favourites mm. of the game. It's not going to make a difference this summer because obviously they're going into games, Germany, Hungary, whoever. Difficult games, they might have to sit, play on the counter. But I think at home against Northern Ireland, they're the ones where you really want Scotland to go take a hold of the game. And like Steve Clark said, they're losing the goal uh, pretty early. Makes it much more difficult. You're up against a team that's going to defend. And now you need to break them down. And Scotland just, they just, they just couldn't do it. Yeah, the onus was on us to make things happen. And we just couldn't. We could hardly carve out a chance but credit to Northern Ireland I thought the way they played it you know steaming into tackles really wanted to win it um, and uh, I thought their game plan worked really well Connor Bradley a bit special yeah well he's obviously made his breakthrough into the Liverpool team mm. he, he looks the part he's obviously got a lot more to come a lot more to offer and his goal is, is great obviously the, the help of the deflection but a brilliant moment for him Stevie Clark said afterwards, um, what does he hope for in the next camp, which, as Andy mentioned, is the, the two friendlies? Everybody fitting well, ready to go. That's it. Short and sharp, simple. I'll watch games, I'll watch the lads as they're, as they're playing, I'll get my selection, hopefully I'll get the right selection, and hopefully I've got a full, full squad of players to choose from We're when gonna, we go to the tournament. We're going to be watching every single game now, aren't we, to see where... Because the news is good for Andy Robertson today, I believe, Jamie? Yeah, I heard it's, it's not too bad, which is, yeah. is good for Scotland and Liverpool, obviously. Yeah, of course. Well, that's the last thing you want, eh? It's one of these yeah. important players to pick up an injury that not only would they be ruled out of, you know, so many of them have got uh, big prizes to play for you. Last thing you want to do is miss a major tournament like the one in Germany. For sure, we would absolutely. I mean, there's great excitement. James in here is talking about it already, isn't he? In fact, he's threatening to, I think, do a tour of Europe afterwards. I just yeah. hope he behaves himself. Of course he will. <laughs> Always. 0808 08, 17 17 700. We're back to the domestic action. And he did say uh, off air as soon as it's the... The blue light touch, boom, isn't it? When something happens with either yeah. Celtic or Rangers. In this case, uh, Brendan Rodgers. I thought that was, we had some good calls. And you can tell the passion. I mean, I get it from uh, from all the callers. Connor did but make even, a good even point. But even a yeah. sort of Celtic story, if you like, it, it triggers a Rangers fan's response. It's, uh, that's Glasgow for you. It's the old gold fish bowl that we've all grew up in. Sure, I know. You love it, don't you? Yeah, probably. For sure. <laughs> Andy, we, we don't want to lose your bigger point, though, which is not about Brendan Rodgers or or what Rangers said it's about the interpretation of it and can we please let the game flow listen he was dead right yeah. in the fact that some of the comments were eh, sorry some of the decisions mm -hmm. were baffling but it's not the only time it's happened it's pretty much happening on a, a weekly basis and when you see and hear managers they're almost pleading for someone to listen to them and I don't understand why they all don't get together mm -hmm with the SFA, with a group of referees, and say, what are we doing here? We're not selling a good product to the supporters, and so much that can uh, can be improved if, if they all got together. And the clubs can do that, can't they? The chair, if they the chose, the club. If they choose to do it. Yeah, the chief exec. Why, why, why doesn't yeah. someone t take uh, ownership of this and, mm. and, and lead the way? Yes, it's... Again, it's hard. We're going back to the VAR where all the teams need to come together. That's what you need first. You need the teams to come together, come in full agreement, what they want out of it, what they think can improve it. And there's got to be a bit of give and take between the SFA and the clubs. Decisions are made. Is, is handball this? Is handball that? I mean, these are the easy things to us that they should change, but you never know what's going to happen. Jamie Murphy, you've got Airdrie tomorrow night. Andy's got Aberdeen. 
on uh, Saturday, Saturday, Aberdeen, Ross County. Are Aberdeen ever going to have a new manager? Alan Burrows, the chief exec, has been speaking today, addressing the ongoing process of appointing a new manager. He's explained there's been a delay connected to the preferred candidate they had identified. So that they've identified somebody, but it hasn't happened yet. It's gone on forever. Any Is it going to be Michael O'Neill? I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, obviously, he was bought out of uh, some contract. Uh, was it Stoke? Stoke bought yep. out of a mm-hmm. contract. Yep. In any event, he, he didn't. He didn't rule it out. Mm-hmm. So maybe uh, I don't think Aberdeen are going to pay hundreds of thousands of pounds to get someone out of a job. I think they've probably identified someone, and if there is some sort of delay with that preferred candidate, mm-hmm. then by all means, take your time. I think what we have seen with Stephen Glass. Um, with uh, Barry Robson and Jim Goodwin. I I think you've seen a trail there of younger managers. They obviously went for the interim uh, experience of Neil Warnock, which was a bit bizarre, even more bizarre that he's walked away from it, given that he took them to a semi-final. Maybe there was some relationship breakdown there, but this is Aberdeen we're talking about. And in my mind, they should always be you know, up there, uh, taking points when they can off Celtic Rangers, but certainly challenging Hearts, Hibs or whoever to be the the best of the rest. It's important that they get the right man. You would argue that the last couple haven't been right for them. So it's it's, it's difficult to say, but they've almost wrote this season off, but you can't write it off that much because they're closer to the bottom than they would hope. They've got to get some wins under their belt even if they don't have a manager and make sure they're not involved in that scrap at the end of the season. And yet the history books, when you look at it, they got to the League Cup final, narrowly beaten, yeah, wasn't it? With the Rangers, they lost. Yeah. And they're in a Cup semi-final against Celtic in a few weeks' time. It's, it's phenomenal. And I think maybe they did get the right person but didn't give them enough time. Barry Robson. I mean, I don't know if it would have worked out, but they pulled the... Press that button too I, soon. I, I, I thought they looked adventurous in their European campaign. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were scoring goals. I mean, it's... And I did a. I spoke to Barry a couple of times after games where results weren't going their way in the league, and they were really struggling from a from an early period. And he was, you know, it's just this was something new to the club as a whole. They were playing big European games, and then being asked to perform on the Sunday, and for some reason, they just couldn't get up for it. The the, the bit of travelling that they did, but. Um, yeah, I think Dave Cormack looked at the bigger picture and when they kept losing games, at some point you've got to pull the trigger and uh, this is Aberdeen we're talking about. Yeah. Along along with Hearts and Hibs, they're the, they've got to be the big big city clubs that you want to see comfortably in the top half of the table, fighting for uh, the cup competitions, as Aberdeen are doing, to be sure. to be fair, but all, uh, also fighting for uh, you know participation in Europe. I think time it. Clubs for managers is getting less and less yeah, now. Yeah. It's getting harder and harder. If you go on a bad run, to come back round and get out of it and go across the other side, as you put it. But it happened to us at Hibs and Jack Ross. We finished yeah. third mm-hmm. the season before. I think we lost maybe six or seven in a row, which wasn't great. I think we had the cup final the week later and, and then right. Jack Ross was sacked at Hibs. So that's unfortunate. That's the way football is at the minute. Uh, Are you still a big club, Aberdeen? Are they still a big club? Oh, absolutely, yeah. 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 Because we remember them. If you ask anyone, especially up in Aberdeen, they still regard themselves as top three uh, and they want to be there. But the problem is, Hearts, Hibs, they all think they should be top three as well. In a different world now, Jamie, where, I mean, years ago, used to be pressure from the the media, just, you know, television, newspapers. Now, social media dominates everyone's thoughts and you can... You can be swayed by the opinion of hundreds of teenagers, yeah, and you know the clubs clubs will act on it, yeah, I know rightly a, or wrongly. Sorry, I know for a fact that chairman and directors they look at things like Twitter and mm-hmm. Instagram, they look at comments. Like you said, you don't know who's yeah. behind these comments, you don't know who's seen sure. these things, and they'll be like, "Oh no, they don't like the manager or the manager. It's not for them." So and it gets, That's... it definitely gets in their head. Quick break for the news, then we're back. Andy Walker, Jimmy Murphy, Paul Cooney, 0808 17 17 700. 
When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go! Our two and already from our one, Andy Walker, Jamie Murphy are here. Andy, you're in the uh, online already. I've seen the record from the sun. Huge embarrassment. It needs fixing. This is the uh, the ruling about Brendan Rogers. It's the chat about it. You're saying we're looking in the wrong direction. They're getting it wrong. They need leadership. Yes. What, what was your point in the first hour? Well, I see that Celtic have made a statement. They're trying to get the highest standards. Uh, I think they could do it by you know, bringing all the clubs together. You've already heard Stuart Kettlewell just in the last couple of weeks. Motherwell have been left in the dark over uh, some of our calls in their game against Aberdeen. And in recent weeks, I've been speaking to you know Hearts, Hibs uh, managers. They're not happy with VAR. I've heard... You know, Dave Martindale talking about it. I've heard Derek McInnes talking about it. So um, we're we're really heading into the business end of the season. And I have got absolutely no doubt we will have a horrific decision that will lead to huge controversy, whether it be relegation, top six, qualifying for Europe, or indeed the title. You made a great point in the first hour as well, Jamie, about the fact that others have had a two-match ban with one of them suspended. Yeah, so the, at least the SFA are being consistent with yeah. what, they're, mm. what they're bringing out. What you don't want to see is them changing uh, punishments for, mm. for everything. Uh, so it's good to see that at least they're staying on the same level as the others. And was that Robbie Nielsen you said? Uh, and Caldwell and Nielsen. And, the two. and Caldwell as well? Yes. But the problem we've had this season with referees has been, you know, Rangers calling out Willie Collum, Celtic calling out John Beaton. Yeah. That... that that's too much. It's it's unacceptable. You, I think I'm right in saying when Philip Camont was talking about it was put to him about the um, yeah. the Willie Collum thing. He said, mm. "Well, I wasn't involved in that." So it was a sort club. Of, yeah. It was a club. So you sort of got the impression that'll not happen again, mm. and that's the way it should be. As soon as you lose faith in the integrity of the officials, then the game's a bogey. Too much banned for Brendan Rodgers, one of them suspended. So he's not in the dugout for the game on Sunday at Livingston at the early kickoff. Celtics have released a statement this afternoon. Clearly, we're disappointed with the outcome of today's hearing, although we will accept the panel's decision. And everyone's yeah. already talking about the Celtic Rangers game. Mm. Uh, we had a caller earlier who quite rightly highlighted how difficult it was for Celtic to beat Livingston at Parkhead in the Scottish Cup. It was two each with five, ten minutes to go. So there's Livingston coming to Glasgow and getting a couple of goals. I know that they're bottom of the table and struggling badly and in my view will probably be relegated. But every game, when you're in this title race, every game is so crucial, it's so critical. And the biggest story for me around Celtic is, is Cal McGregor fit? Yeah. Is Rio mm-hmm. Hatati fit? Is Carter Vickers fit? If you can get them some vital game time, I think that will help in your preparation for the, the game the following weekend. That'll be vital for the running. See mm-hmm. if they can get these kind of players back in. Some big games coming up, you know, the split comes in. Uh, they've still got the old firm game at home to come as well, which will be a big one. So the, the quicker they get these players back, the, the better for them. Callum McGregor, we're waiting to hear. We don't know, Andy, that's that's the truth. It's been quiet, hasn't it? Um, He's expected to be back fairly soon. Hatati has been back in training for a number of weeks. Do you think with the nature of uh, Rio Hatati's injury, he will play a significant role in the coming two months? You can only hope so if you're a Celtic supporter. He just, uh, he's been wonderful to watch yeah. since arriving as a, a Celtic player, scoring those goals uh, against Rangers. Just in general, uh, his play, his passing with right foot, left foot, short or long, uh, he's struck up a really good sort of understanding with the captain, Callum McGregor. And I think it would help uh, Matt O'Reilly too, because uh, I think those three, if you're talking about the strongest midfield, I think it would be those three. I think think ideally you could get 
had had some game time this weekend. Mm. I know you've had the international break. You would like to think he's put some effort in in the training ground, and and Rogers has worked with him and and the team been back involved. So you you would be hoping that he would get some sort of game time this mm. weekend, whether it's from the start or the bench. I think he played what forty minutes or so in a bounce game against mm. St. Mirren. Yeah, these are important. Yeah. These kind of things, and as a player, sometimes they're not the games you want to play in. But yeah. you know they're important for coming back from injury, getting yourself up to match speed, so that you're ready to go when you're up against a Livingston or whoever. Leon's been asked on asking both of you: Is it so much more difficult playing in a friendly, Jamie, compared to a competitive game? Yeah, as as, but that's where it's within yourself. How much effort are you going to put in? How much desire do you have to? You try your best in that game. But like we said, they're important, especially with big games coming up, European Championship in the summer, Scotland have got these friendlies. You've got to prove that you're you're good enough to play in the big games. And if you want to do that, you've got to perform in these friendlies. Yeah, you never really liked friendlies. You want to play for something, you want to play for, for points, for prizes, for your prestige, you want to score goals when it when it really matters and counts. Um and friendlies, is it for your fitness? Um, no, I think there is a, a different change in attitude. And, and quite rightly, you can't treat every... I mean, players say it all the time, treat every game the same, treat every day at training the same. Mm, not sure about that. Yeah, it, it must be different. If you're playing you know, in a league game, a cup game or whatever, it has to be different. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, pre-season, for example... I've had pre-seasons where I've lost every pre-season friendly and then you go out and you're brilliant on the first day of the season and then I've had it the other way around where yeah. you've been brilliant in the pre-season win all the friendlies and then lose the first game of the season so it is completely different the competitive edge of a, of a league game Andy we were asking uh, during the international break uh, your favourite player midfielder in Scotland a Scottish player in the last 20-30 years Yeah, I think when you reach the level that Paul Lambert reached going to you know, I remember Paul coming on as a sub for St Mirren at Motherwell and he was a sort of winger at the time yep. and then of course he, he goes to Motherwell some years later he, he makes that remarkable move when no one really wanted him and he, he went to, to Germany and he, he's a Champions League winner it's a phenomenal so, story isn't it? a phenomenal story so to then come back and be part of such a successful Celtic team uh, he, he's got to be uh, in the yeah. top two or three. You were saying that the other night, so we're throwing it at you, Jamie, but I know you listen most nights after training when you can. Who would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's easy to say as he's, he's part of the Go Radio team here, but Barry Ferguson was always one that, uh, growing up that, yeah. that you looked up to, being Rangers captain, mm. scoring in Scottish Cup finals, scoring in, in big games, you know, moving down to the Premier League and then coming back mm. again to win some more. Uh, down there with Sunnis and all that, you know. Yeah, yeah big, he, big time. he was a proper yeah. Rangers player. Yeah. He? He was one. He lived his dream, Boy, exactly. boyhood fan, uh, and then was there from what age thirteen, fourteen, and they helped to build him up. It's quite a story. He used to get the training yeah. and stuff, and you know he was almost ready to chuck it. Well, I think. I've it's, said I've yeah. said to him before. I always remember playing against his brother, who I yeah. really mm. rated. I thought Derek was a was a really good player too. He sure was. Jamie's still playing this weekend. You've got a game with Airdrie. How's Scott Brown? What's the latest uh, on the manager? Are you? Yeah, well, he, he wasn't happy last week, put it yeah. that way. So uh, it was a difficult one for us last week. Uh, probably a poor, poor performance all round. So, you know, it's just one of the games where you have to get back into training on the Monday, uh, get things going again, get ready for the weekend, which I think we've done so far. We've had a good week of training. So you've been up against Dundee United and Wraith Rovers this season. You know, it's a huge game, of course. Tannadice on Saturday. Who do you think is going to win? Well, up until recently, I'd have said Dundee United easily, but you know, Wraith have come right back into it. Mm. Dundee United have slipped up a couple of times last week at Inverness at home. So it's a difficult one. I think if you're Dundee United, you're still looking to win that game. I see all the bit of nonsense with the yeah, tickets, with the tickets yeah. for the away end and stuff. Any advantage, that old thing. But I think Dundee United have to be winning that game if, if they want to go up. You've got to laugh at the amount of clubs who are yeah. restricting the allocation no. to away supporters. Yeah, choke the game it's uh, quite extraordinary it's, it's, a, bit, it's a big ground it's, it's not huge. As, even as if they're probably yeah. going to fill it with yeah. the United but their, fans their performance that's so I haven't seen a lot of championship mm. football this season but I did see the game against Dunfermline mm -hmm. Dunfermline oh, absolutely barred Dundee United I was really I was really shocked um, mm. at that so it's 
Jamie says it's really difficult to predict. Uh, Wraith must feel as though if they win that one, they're in pole position. You're talking a lot of good sense tonight, Andy, because you're really? right. There's tons of space in these grounds. We want people back. We oh, want yeah. the money, the revenue. Why would you restrict It would tickets? be such a great yeah. occasion. and uh, Most of the time, I'm just coming from a player's point of view. And whether you had uh, you know, a, a, a ground full of your own supporters, or I always just liked uh, an, an away crowd, a sizeable away crowd that just added to the atmosphere and actually as a player I think can can help your game I don't know if you feel the same Jim. yeah you, you want as many people at the game as you can yes you would like it to be more your home supporters but if it isn't then you know you want people in seats you want people watching you want to impress people that are mm. watching that's a big part of it as well you know I think Livingston do it they'll, they'll probably see mm. at the game at the weekend Celtic will have a lot of that stadium because mm. uh, obviously a smaller club maybe need a bit more money from the tickets coming in as well uh, how important is your groundsman? You know where I'm going with this. I see that <laughs> Dundee and Dundee United, the groundsman war. Dundee have pinched the Dundee United. Uh, I always groundsman. remember the old Dundee groundsman. It was a father son sort of grandfather yes. thing, and they were they were really nice lads. But I don't know what happened. They were relieved mm. of their duties. But um, the Robertson's, it, yeah. it has been embarrassing to get to some grounds and and Dundee. I've always regarded as one of the better surfaces. I've mm. really looked forward from my time at Motherwell, playing against mm. Dundee when they were a top side, John Brown playing for them, Tommy Coyne. Um, it was always a brilliant surface and I don't know what has happened in the last year or two. It's, it's certainly gone downhill. And the, the late call-off from the game against Rangers recently was a wee bit embarrassing. Embarrassing is the word. Paul Murray's the new groundsman crossing the street at the end of the season. Yeah, he's a brave man. Yeah, but you know, the teams are always looking for ways that they can get better. I think the pitches in Scotland should be better. Uh, I think more can be done from the SFA in regards to the standard of pitches. Uh, I know we've got the Astro, and there's a big debate about uh, whether that should go or stay or or whatever. But I certainly think the SPL teams should have the best grass pitches in Scotland, which unfortunately, I mean, it isn't the case. 0808 17 17 700, your chance to call Jamie Murphy and Andy Walker. 0808 17 17 700, or join the conversation at Golf Football Show, or send us a WhatsApp on 0808 17 17 700. Can we look at the games this weekend? Andy, we'll start at your old club, Motherwell, up against St Mirren. Well, uh, Motherwell can't rule themselves out of uh, getting dragged back in. I mean, I know they went through a really tough time where they hardly had a win in about 18 games, but uh, their recent form has been good. Um, big disappointment to lose at home to to Aberdeen. But uh, with home advantage, they have always got a chance. I think this one will be a score draw. I'm going 1-1. Blair Spittle looks as though he's off to Hearts in the summer, but the manager's saying no issues just now. Yeah. He'll give everything. Yeah, I think you've seen that with a number of players yeah. now. It's just the way the world works where you can sign a pre-contract. But given the level of professionalism that uh, players have, I'd be, I'd be very surprised if he, he wasn't totally mm. committed. And I've really enjoyed watching him this season. Some of his goals... I've been really spectacular. He's had an excellent season for Mullow. Yeah. I mean, getting that many goals from midfield, mm. uh, it's it's done them done them wonders really to get a few extra points on the board. They'll still be looking to get a few more just to make sure they're away from from that bottom two position. And what are you thinking about the game, Mullow Saint Mirren? Huge one for Saints as well. Yeah, I think I'll go for. Uh, I was going to say Saint Mirren. Uh, Mullow will win. Uh, right. yeah. I think at home you're looking to win that game. I know Saint Mirren over the last month have had a few poor results. Uh, Obviously, the latest one being Kilmarnock a couple of yeah. weeks ago. So I think Muller will be confident going into that one. Yeah, that kind of day can really affect you, can't it? You yeah, know, shipping five goals is yeah. never good. I think it's always in the back of your mind. Yeah, St Mirren on 42 points, Hibs 38, Dundee 36, Muller on 32. And then we've got Aberdeen on 30, St Johnson 28, Ross County 27 and Livingston on 17. Top of the table after 30 games, Celtic on 71 points. Rangers, 29 games on 70. Hearts on 55. Killy on 44. What about Rangers, Hibs? So you, two of your old teams, Hibs, of course, two men sent off a few weeks ago. They're talking about it. They know they, the discipline's got to be much better. Yeah, Hibs, uh, they've picked it up a little bit, but you know, it's still a difficult game for them going to Ibrox. Uh, you'd like to think Rangers would win that one, but there's been many a game over the years where Hibs have went to Ibrox and performed and got points. 
Uh, so Rangers will be looking to avoid that slip up, but I think they will. I think they'll come out of it with a win. Looking forward to the game. Yeah, it should be a good game. Uh, you know, I know Hibs want to play football under uh, Montgomery <coughs> as, as well as Rangers do. So mm. uh, hopefully, it's a good spectacle. Just not as open as they were before, Andy. Well, Hibs. I think you hit the nail on the head, Paul. I think they need to have better discipline. And in the Jamie Murphy derby, I would go for a home <laughs> win. <laughs> The Jamie Murphy Derby Rangers point of view Andy A couple of weeks off They'll be watching to see Who comes back from international duty If they're okay Although I don't yeah. think there's too many uh, Red Van There was a worry about him But it yeah. sounds as though He could well be fit He has improved enormously Since the early part of the season Where he You know He couldn't get in In front of uh, Barisic But he's definitely Come on to a game uh, He's one of the ones That looks more comfortable With the, the with new manager He's certainly playing A, a lot better and we'll mention it a million times between now and the end of the season. You cannot take any game for granted. I know that Rangers went Easter Road and won in the in the cup recently, but Hibs have got players that can that can trouble you. They've got a bit of quality. They've got a bit of pace. Uh, no game is easy in the title running, but I do feel that Rangers will will get there. What does Jack Butland have to do to get an England cap? I mean, they've got so many issues. Uh, Jordan Pickford has been number one, but even, even he had a bit of a howler the other night. But you were disappointed that he wasn't chosen. It doesn't look as though he's going to go to the Euros, but he's having the season of his life. Yeah, I think he'll be thinking that himself. I, I, I can't really do any more. He's been excellent for Rangers, one of the players of the season, but still not in with a sniff. So I can't, you just hope that that's not in his thinking, that he has to go back down south to, to get called up. Uh, you know, but that, that unfortunately, that probably is. Uh, I know Rangers will want to keep him as much as they can uh, and try and persuade him that he can get in the England squad from being up here and performing well. He's been brilliant, hasn't he? Um, has there been a Rangers player that's been more consistent? I doubt it. Has there been a Rangers player that's got more points? Maybe Tavernier with uh, some of yeah. his goals, mm -hmm. but he's made some vital save, uh, saves at crucial times. It's a great pity mm -hmm. that uh, you know Scottish football is not regarded uh, as... as um, and the way it should be, really, from from down south, and uh, having seen some of those goalkeeper uh, goalkeepers that are already in the England squad, mm. uh, Jack Buckland is is at the very worst on a par with them, and he's he's been playing some some European ties up here that the the lads down south haven't. But um, it is where it is, and yeah. I, I think he's been I think he's been uh, Rangers' best signing. And I see Derek Ferguson said, yeah, he agreed there probably will be. Uh, bids for him in the summer but there's a lot of football between now and then and maybe if Rangers have got Champions League football it might be a lure that keeps him or is that being a bit um, idealistic in that the money in England is off the scale? I, th I think it should be enough I mean, players want to play at the highest level in Champions League it's the highest level that you can get in club football so I'm sure that will come into his mind so that's, that's another little reason why Rangers should be hoping to get them. I think as a club as well you've always you've also got to look at a business decision mm. and if you if you can get really good money for Jack Butland then that's good business to bring him up here for, for pretty much nothing and sell him on for a if it was um, a big profit and then you would need to rely on your your recruitment staff to go and get someone who can do a mm. similar job and Rangers need to learn how to do that Celtic have been doing it for years they've had huge players mm. hugely popular players and you sell them for uh, for a big profit and you, you move on. I know that a lot of Celtic fans think this is um, not the way to go about your business when you want to make uh, a bit of an impact in Europe, but Celtic's business model has worked for them. And Joe Hart, to see Stephen Welsh has been saying what an influence he is, not just in the pitch, but uh, behind the scenes in the dressing room as well. 13 clean sheets from his 39 appearances this well, season. Well, he'll also want to go out on a high. Um, and uh, he's he's been a good buy when taking over from Barkas, yeah. who was a £5 million yeah. uh, signing. Uh, Joe Hart has been terrific. And bringing all that experience, I think, helped those around him. He's had some career, hasn't he, Andy? When you, when you look at it, two Premier League titles, one FA Cup, two League Cups, 75 caps Tremendous. for England, two World Cups, two European Championships. And at Celtic, was that two titles? Yeah. Scottish Cup, League Cup. Tremendous, absolutely tremendous. And you, you need players with a bit of stature. 
you need players with a bit of presence. You need players, goalkeepers. You need them to make. You know, at, at Celtic, more often than not, you are watching the game. But when you are called into action, you need to be ready. You need to be. Uh, you need to be strong enough to make a big save at an important time. Two league cups, wasn't it? Time flies so quickly, Jamie. It's uh, oh, here in Scotland. Oh eight, oh eight, seventeen, seventeen, seven hundred. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team, and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go. This time tomorrow night, it's going to be Barry Ferguson who'll be here, and Mark Guidi tonight. We're in the company of Scottish international player Andy Walker and former. I'm not going to do them all. Sheffield United. <laughs> Partick Thistle, Rangers, Hibs, Motherwell, Borussia Dortmund. I made that one up there. <laughs> so Fear many clubs. Enough. What was your favourite time apart from Rangers, Jamie Murphy? Because we're just getting to know you in the last few weeks. So away from Rangers, which was your boyhood club. Yep. Uh, I think it's probably Chef United mm. in terms of playing my best football, enjoying it more under Nigel, Nigel Clough, uh, having a good time with my teammates. It definitely the period at Chef United. But I think the... The most successful time was Brighton, Brighton. obviously yep. winning promotion. Uh, had a really good side. Yeah. You know, Lewis Dunk obviously went yeah. on playing for England the other night. So, yeah, good Who to play. Who else was in that Brighton team? Who was a star? Tom. Uh, Anthony Knockart got player of the season. Knockart, that, you know, he yeah, was really good that year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Murray yeah. used to score every week. Score. <laughs> used to stand in the right place, but would come to him and put it in the back of the net. <laughs> and every what was that like? Getting promotion happen. to the biggest and best probably league in the world. Yeah, it was surreal. Uh, I'd say it's something as a kid you dream of playing, playing in the Premier League uh, and to finally get there you know I've played this game for a long time and you put in the effort and you know sometimes not all the time it gets recognised with, with trophies and all these kind of things Andy great day away from your time at Celtic we've known you for a number of years Sheffield United is a club that you've got <laughs> a special place yeah I really enjoyed my time there Howard Kendall was our manager yeah. who won the one of the, the last English uh, winners of the, the top flight yeah. of English football but he was pretty unique he had a good assistant in Viz, Viv Busby and uh, he had a great habit of signing good players and we were when Howard came in we were struggling at the bottom of the table and uh, we ended up just finishing outside of the playoffs. And then the next season, when he had a, a, a full pre-season with us, um, we finished in the playoffs and lost at, lost at Wembley, which was a tough one. But I, I think Howard already knew that he'd been, he was going mm. to go back to Everton. And <sighs> I don't know if that affected his, his uh, focus or whatever. Yeah. It, mm. it, it was, I mean, it was a brilliant goal with David Hopkin. Um, who put one in the mm. top corner with pretty much the last kick of the ball so it was a dramatic winner Mark has been on of course it's been uh, European uh, football preparation with the friendlies losing to Netherlands 4-0 on Friday night and then 1-0 the other evening to Newcastle so Julian Nagelsmann saying today he's quoted in the papers as saying bring it on now I think it's not so much about Scotland but he is saying the way they played at the weekend with uh, two terrific performances especially against France Bring on Scotland. I'm not sure that's what he said, Andy, but you can imagine Germany are coming good just at the wrong time for us. I think the fact that they're in our group, you'd want to play them first. I mean, there's huge pressure on them because they haven't been great recently, mm. but you'd want to play them first because, um, you know, we have had a good qualifying campaign. We we are sort of giving people a bit of food for thought. Can Scotland do something at these uh, Euros? Possibly. And our best chance, obviously, is to go off to a, a positive start. Whether that's a, a draw or a win, you, you'd want to play Germany first and hopefully we can be a lot mm. better than we than we were against Northern Ireland. I thought we were terrific mm. uh, away uh, against Holland and I thought some of our football was really good. I think the good thing about playing Germany first is you know that even if you lose that game, it's still in your hands. You can still go out and win the next two games uh, and have a chance of qualifying. So... Uh, I'm sure, like us all, we're glad that it's Germany in the first game. Nothing like playing for Scotland, though, Jamie? No, it's what we all strive for as, as mm. young players. Uh, no matter what game it is, friendlies, European Championships, World Cups, uh, you want to represent your country. And that's that's the same for every Scotland. And, player, yeah. Andy's been on, a Rangers fan, saying he's, he's harking on about Lon Shankland. Has he done enough for you? Because he wanted him to come to Rangers in January. He hasn't come. No doubt we'll go back to that at the end of the season. If Rangers don't have an out-and-out -out great striker between now and the end of the season, who is going to be in that role, do you think, for Rangers? 
Silva's playing, he's not an out and out striker, is he? Dezer's good, a uh, number of goals, but we know the story, he misses some chances as well. What do you feel? Yeah, I know, I know Silva's been playing wide the last couple of weeks, but I think that's more down to injuries and right. stuff over the last six weeks, you'd say, or, or so. I think if Silva's fit, he's he's the number one striker. I think he puts the effort in. And not that doesn't Dessers doesn't put the effort in, but I feel like he's got that little bit more quality when in front of goal. You know, he didn't have a successful time down at Wolves, but he's he's went abroad on loan and done well. And he's done well for Rangers since he's came in. So I think he's the one that will get the nod. Although Dessers isn't a bad backup, no. to put it that way. He, he's done well in the games he's played recently. He had a slow start, as did a lot of kind of Michael Beale signings. But he's, he, he's brought himself more back into the fold over over the last couple of months. I think it is a fair sort of uh, comment to make that Rangers need an, an out-and-out goal scorer. Yeah. I mean, they, they had one in uh, Morelos yeah. and then obviously he lost his focus, he lost his way, but when Steven Gerrard had a grip of him and he was he was lean and he was hungry yeah. and scoring goals against pretty much everyone, uh, what, what a centre-forward he was for Rangers. Yeah. And I, they haven't got that at the moment. Um, and I'm not sure they will get it out of uh, out of Dessers. So um, I think that's certainly an area where Philip Camon could, you know, could strengthen uh, in the summer. And of course, it depends. His spending power will be reflected whether Rangers win the, the course, title or yeah. not. You know, I've had I've had an ex-manager say that you live and die by how good your strikers are. So I think that's pretty yeah. apt. I think if Rangers strikers are on form mm-hmm. towards the end of the season they'll go on and win the league and the same with Celtic if Celtic strikers uh, get goals at big times then, then they'll go on and win it so it's finely balanced Was it ominous for you Jamie if you're wearing your Rangers hat which I'm asking you to do looking at Kyogo the other week in the St Johnson game Yeah you know how dangerous Kyogo mm. is he's, he's shown that maybe not as much this year but last year he, he was terrific so as I, again as you said with the Rangers hat on you're yeah. hoping that doesn't come out between now and the end of the season but there is a good chance it will, uh, and I think it will go right down to the wire. Striking position for Celtic. Um, well, Kyogo is the one who did it earlier this season at Ibrox. I'm sure he would get the nod again because he's he's done it before. Just the energy that he has, and uh, maybe a bit of the fear factor for Rangers because here's a guy who you really need to watch because he's got such a good record. The goal he scored at Parkhead and the New Year game was right out of the top drawer. Mm. This is something he's capable of. That one at Parkhead was with his left foot, the one at Ibrox earlier this season, where he's right. Both of them stunning finishes. So um, I, I would be really surprised if he's not in from the start. And Adam Ida, of course. How, how would you assess his first few months, Andy? He's got goals. Mm. Couple a of, couple of penalties, of course, that really endeared him to the Celtic support with the pressure at, uh, at Easter Road. Um, and then he got a couple of goals at, at, at Motherwell where he started the game and the, just the, the style of his header, the, the aggression in that headed goal, that was something that you know you haven't seen since maybe Yakimakis and his, and his heyday, someone who could be really physical and, and go and attack it. But that was a pretty special goal and then obviously to get that, that late winner, um, he's maybe got something but... Um, if you're going to Ibrox next week, no matter what happens this weekend, mm-hmm. it would be Kyogo for, for me to start the game. I think it's pretty obvious Rogers likes that striker with a big physical presence. Mm-hmm. I think that's why he's brought Ida in. I know some Celtic fans weren't happy mm-hmm. bringing him in, wasn't playing at Norwich at the time. But I think he's, he's proved his worth. He's came in, scored a couple of big goals, a couple of winners. But like Andy said, I think that goal from Kyogo, I know it's a, a t- bit of time ago now, but that goal from Kyogo and the the other old farm game in the season it shows the quality he's got and that and that could change the game in these kind of games you know one of these goals from outside the area somebody come up with something special so I think he's the one for that there's only £40 million pounds at stake in the next couple of months it's absolutely massive <laughs> not a lot yeah, isn't it lot. it's phenomenal and uh, then the fallout from whoever loses you know just the, know. the general business they've done the bar you know, the, uh, the, <laughs> Sorry, whole, the whole VAR yeah. experience that will let's that hope will we're not talking into. VAR let's hope it's uh, yeah you don't want a yeah. title or a relegation that would be decided by VAR that's the, the last thing the best team won win <laughs> well it's, it's going to be some run uh, running I fear VAR will be involved oh no no hopefully we'll see um, what about Tom Lawrence what are you thinking on him he's been really good uh, particularly the last couple of months mm-hmm. you know the big European games he's done well against Benfica both times 
the goal, the goal went down at Kilmarnock mm-hmm. to, to win the game uh, playing against him down south I know he was at mm-hmm. Derby and stuff like that he was always a really good player he was always one you had to watch out for not just from from a outfield point of view but set pieces as well he's got a great strike on him he can get goals so you're hoping that he chips in with a few more you know he's definitely got that in him that strike from outside of the box a bit of creativity so I think Rangers fans will be looking for that for him and keep him fit as well and keep him fit that's yeah. important yeah definitely Andy, what do you I like him uh, the goal against Benfica was lovely and, and his early sort of Rangers career I remember he scored a brilliant uh, header was at Easter Road um, he just showed up really well and he's done so many good things at uh, Derby you keep him fit uh, he's a really good option whether he plays from the start or you know someone who can come on and change the game in your favour For Celtic I'm thinking Paolo Bernardo I see he captained the Portuguese under 21s the other day which is uh, it's an honour Yeah um, of course Can't do him any harm His sort of best spell around that uh, game against Rangers when he scored and then he'd, uh, he he got another goal up at uh, Dens. He played really well against St Mirren, set up a goal or two there. And you thought he would kick on from that, but he's he, he's gone back to to maybe not being as impressive. But he's he's certainly someone who's got potential, and you know, so many. You you use that word uh, potential for so many of the the Celtic squad, and, and and I think that's why some of the supporters were crying out for a. You know, a, a starting a living ready in, in the January window, but he didn't get one. I think he's as good as he's done. I think he's the player that probably comes out for yeah. your McGregor or your Hattati yeah. coming back. Uh, and that makes him a good option, obviously, to come off the bench. But I think you're looking if you're Celtic, you want Hattati and McGregor in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, Matt O'Reilly, we talked, everyone spoke about him early in the season. He was one of the best players in the country, yeah. wasn't he? It shaded a bit in the last month or two. Um, yeah, he's still involved with the international team and uh, still got a lot to offer. I think he can play a lot better. I, I think he can be more effective. I think it might depend on the, you know, that sort of chemistry that he's he's already established with the likes of Callum McGregor. Mm-hmm. Get Hatati back in there. He's he's used to playing with these players. And he's missed them, hasn't he? I think so. And you know, Celtic as a team have have missed them, and sometimes individuals. You know, you, you you strike up a bit of a rapport with those that are closest to you mm. and you get to understand their movement, you get to understand passes before they even happen. And um, if Celtic can have O'Reilly and Hatati and McGregor fit, I think they'll all play. I think the thing about run-ins is it doesn't really matter what you've done previous, how good you've been, how bad you've been. You know you've got how many games is there? Eight, nine games left till the end of the season. It's all about now, it's all about how you do in the next game. You know, big prizes up for stake. Can you perform at your highest level? And all these players will be wanting to do that. Eight games for Celtic, nine for Rangers. Going to be a busy spell, uh, especially for Rangers with the rearranged uh, game coming up. Uh, and the goal difference, exactly the same. Phenomenal. What about Dujon Sterling? We know how well he's done. He's been injured. And he, uh, Rangers will hope to get him back really soon. Yeah, j- just for the fact that he can play in a... M- a number of positions yeah. you know if they're struggling with injuries you always seem to have Sterling there he could fill in left back right back centre mid right mid mm. he, he, he's done them all so you'd be wanting him fit as well as your other players obviously want your starting 11 or your preferred starting 11 fit but it's good to have these kind of versatile players that can fill in when other people can't and yeah, he just strikes me as a good pro it's someone who's happy to fill in any of those positions just wants to play wants to be part of a team and you need that. You need players who are capable of, of uh, fitting in in a, in a number of positions. He's one of them. And Andy, the captains are always so important. James Tavenier, you mentioned what a season he's having goal-wise. Yeah. And uh, his record is phenomenal. It could be a huge six, seven weeks for him. Yeah. Uh, you look at what the captains can offer and I, I think he's been extraordinary value. Uh, Tavenier, remarkable Goal scoring record for a uh, for a right back, but on the other side of it, you've got Callum McGregor who's been over the course before, and just his influence uh, on others around him. Um, I think that can be crucial for Celtic. They'll want him uh, to be fit as soon as possible, and and you know as sharp as possible. It's a bit of an error, isn't it? We're Tavernier at Rangers and uh, McGregor at Celtic. Do you think McGregor will play a lot between now and the end of the season? Do you think he's going to be back? I think he'll get his fitness back and when he does, I think he goes straight into the team because he has a massive influence over others 
Um, you know, I think Brendan Rodgers can uh, can trust them. He's been over the course before. He's a he's got the winning mentality. He knows how to go over the line. And Scotland missed him a bit as well. I know I the, think so, the yeah. midfield is, but he's so important. And he's yeah, got... and even Stevie Clark spoke yeah. about him. And you know, when you've got someone who's played at the highest level, Champions League doesn't look out of place. You know, competing against some of Europe's best, then you you want him in your Scotland team as well. I think even if he's eighty percent fit between now and the rest of the season, I think he has to play. play. He's that big a player for Celtic. Mm-hmm. You know, club captain, uh, a leader in there for them. So I'm pretty sure that if he can play, he will play. And James Tavernier, you played alongside him? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's done great. He's done. He's obviously done great for Rangers with the goals yeah. he scored over the last couple of years. Mm. Uh, and he's got that in him as well. He's got a real drive. I think that's sometimes uh, people don't realise that. He's got a real drive in his training and how he wants to win games. He's, he's upset. He's upset at people if he doesn't, they don't win the game. So he knows the standard. He knows what he has to do. And again, it's, it's about big players performing between now and the end of the season. That could be the difference. Who is going to win the league? Andy asked Jim White the other night. We're going to ask you after the break. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go! Thursday night, Jimmy Murphy and Andy Walker. 0808 17 17 700. Yeah, Jim joined us the other night, award winning Jim White. And uh, Andy, you said him right, Jim, enough of all this chat about Scotland, about winning awards. And your question was. He went for Rangers when I asked him who's going to win it. Put his, uh, he put his head on the line. Jamie, um, Jamie's about to do the same. I'm about to agree with Jim, yeah. I was <laughs> going to say that. Uh, so shocked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they've got yeah. the advantage, haven't they? But the game in hand, you know, it's going to come down to the old farm games. But I think Rangers. And Rangers can win. Obviously, Rangers can win. But how important to beat Celtic at Ibrox a week on Sunday? It's big, not even just for the points, just for a, a for a mental side of it. You know, Celtic yeah. come to Ibrox and win the game. It's a huge advantage for Celtic, obviously, going back to Parkhead with the game's coming up. Uh, so, yeah, it, it could all be on next weekend. If Celtic win at Ibrox, Rangers won't win at Parkhead. That would be three games Celtic have been top dogs. So they would be enormous favourites and that mentality that uh, Jamie speaks about yeah. can't he emphasise it enough uh, if Celtic were to go mm. to Ibrox next week and win I think it's it puts, I, I, it I puts a marker see, down doesn't it puts a marker down I can't see them slipping up given their recent experience what's your feeling at the moment though Andy given before the game so. I'm just well you, you have to be impressed by Philip come on mm. what he's done because, uh, again, you know, we've spoken about it before, but going back to the Rangers' level of performance against Aberdeen when they lost 3-1, they were a million miles from getting anywhere near the title. So for a new manager to come in and go on the run that he did and play the kind of football that they're doing and getting everyone believing and he's getting the supporters believing and for Celtic to be... I just think they were, they were a bit careless... But they could have done a lot better, I think, in the January window. Ch- chose not to, which I think is a, a huge gamble. Um, but it's uh, the fact that it's that it's up for grabs and we're uh, nine, ten games away from it. That's all credit to to Rangers taking advantage of those slip ups that Celtic have had. I think a month ago, if you were looking at it, Rangers were winning games very easily, and Celtic were having a really difficult time, struggling to score, drawing games that they should have won. But now it seems to have come out of that and it's levelled off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Rangers losing at home to Mullow has put it right back in there so that, you know, it's back to being close to even again. Uh, obviously, Rangers still have a little bit of advantage with the game in hand, but, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting for the league. It's exciting for, for everyone in Glasgow, obviously, all of Scotland. Uh, they're all looking forward to seeing how this finishes. Neil, a Rangers fan, has been on saying, how big was it winning the League Cup to get something early in the season is that going to be a factor in Rangers confidence levels for the next two months I don't personally think so no I think you're delighted at the time you've won the league yeah you can say for the rest of the season that they won the league cup but that won't be the trophy that they desperately want they desperately want the league title uh, so until they get that they won't fully be happy I know you want to win both cups it's a big thing in Scotland to, to do that but I think if you ask them before the start of the season I think the SPL is the one that they really want to go for I don't think anyone will speak about it, and nor should they. Mm. I mean, I'm sure they'll be they'll be asked by one or two journalists, but there's only one team that can do the treble, mm. and that would sure. be Rangers. So that would be truly remarkable for Philippe Clement 
And that's what makes it such a, a big title. Uh, the fact that we all know the, the riches available, the, the new uh, Champions League format, uh, the excitement that that brings. And if Celtic were to win it, it would push them even further and further away from Rangers in terms of their, their finance. Although sometimes you feel as though Celtic don't take advantage yeah. of that financial muscle. Money in the bank hasn't been everything has it this season <coughs> excuse me this season for Celtic where the the you momentum imagine, they had can you imagine <laughs> Rangers walk away with the title and yeah. Celtic come out with a balance sheet dear oh dear yeah that's the, the, you know you thought Celtic maybe in the January window would have spent a little bit more but the fact is that they haven't they're obviously confident enough in their squad or or the board haven't given them money either one but, or they couldn't get who they wanted yeah exactly so you, you know they're both going into the end of the season with chances should we look at the games then for this uh, weekend? We'll, can we start with your game, Andy? Aberdeen against Ross County. They've uh, got to do it, Aberdeen. They've got to do it. They've, they've got the players, I think. I've seen them play some really good football, especially some of their, mm -hmm. their European games. But we're now down to a stage where there's a real worry in the amongst the Aberdeen support that they could... You know, if Ross County come and, and get all three points... There's a real fear factor that Aberdeen could get sucked into. I don't think they'll go, they won't go down automatically, but they could absolutely, alongside St Johnston, be fighting for this uh, this playoff spot. That would be mm -hmm. it'd be unthinkable. So I do think they'll be able to handle the pressure on Saturday mm -hmm. and get all three points. Because otherwise, if they get nothing, then Ross County join them on thirty points. Yeah. And if St. Johnson win, which will come to shortly, what do you reckon, Petodri? We're talking about them, a big club and all the rest of it. Can they win against Ross County? Oh, yeah, they can win. But the way they've performed recently hasn't been good. Mm. Uh, Ross County are probably looking at that game thinking, if we've got any thoughts of, of staying up, mm. we've got to go there and put our performance in and try and win that game. But like Andy, I think Aberdeen should have too much for them. Uh, it's a big game. We spoke earlier about them maybe writing this season mm. off, but they certainly can't write this one off. What about St Johnson Dundee? There's no love lost there, is there, between the fans traditionally, so it's a derby. Who do you think's going to win? I hope St Johnson come out with that one. You know, former team, uh, hopefully they do well. Uh, Dundee United have been doing really well this year. You know, at the start of the season when they lost a lot of their players, you were thinking that they would go straight back down. But they've done excellent to be around the top six. And I think it's just getting to that time of year where the teams at the bottom know that they have to win. There's no other option. So I feel that's one that St Johnson have to win. Then you've got some players back, but still some injuries as well. Andy, they have. They've put, been great. Yeah. Just disappointing the game mm. against Rangers was off, but uh, just what they've done over the course of the season and threatening to be a, a top six club after getting promotion, very commendable. But um, you know, you're you're looking at St Johnston trying to take advantage of Aberdeen and Ross County playing each other. If they can get all three points, and I don't know, maybe a maybe a draw or. Uh, at Petodre, they they've won over the weekend. What do you reckon? I think St Johnson might do it. Really, just get yeah, a one 0 okay. victory. Wow, they would go on to thirty one points. Motherwell St Mary, we spoke about earlier. I think did you both go Motherwell? I went for a one one draw. One one draw. Yeah, one for the Steel Men. Went yeah. for the well, the Steel Men. Well done, uh, Ravens Craig. Uh, Hearts Kilmarnock. Jamie, you first. Great game. I think Hearts have shown this year that they're the third best team in Scotland yeah. and by quite some distance so I think you're looking at Hearts to win that game Hearts would then go on to 58 points Andy what do you feel Tynecastle yeah Lauren Shanklin back to his best a bit of a boost getting some uh, international experience and I, I thought he looked lively yeah. certainly over in Holland and uh, he had a, just a pity that effort that he had against Northern Ireland was blocked yeah. when he was mm -hmm. sort of in and around the six yard box but uh, player of the season for me if I was voting tomorrow he would definitely get my vote and I think he'll be part of a, a home win against Gomala yeah and you're right for Scotland the other night it was Lewis Ferguson header Shanklin header both of them mm. you know, came really close so you're going for the Hearts win Did you going say? for the Hearts yeah. the Hearts yeah pretty comfortable yeah, you think so comfortable yeah Derry McInnes will not be happy. I'm sure he <laughs> listens at times. Right, what about the game at Ibrox? Rangers up against St Mirren. Jamie? Hibs. Hibs, of course it's <laughs> Hibs. See, I said St Mirren. That was a test, That's been a long it? day, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Hibs. I, th I think it'll be tight. Rangers will dominate the ball, but I think I think it'll go for 2-0 Rangers. 2-0 Rangers. Scorer, what do you think? What do you feel? Uh, we spoke about the strikers. Let's go one for Silva, one for Dessers. One for Dessers as well. Andy? 
Yeah, I think Hibs will keep 11 on the pitch mm -hmm. uh, this time round. Uh, I think it'll be a bit closer. I'm going 2-1 Rangers. I think Rangers will get the job done, given what is at stake, the fact they've got home advantage. Um, but yeah, I think Hibs can get a goal. 2-1 Rangers. Of course, Rangers would then go back top of the table. Rangers go on to 73 points. Celtic go in on 71 on Saturday. Sunday, what do you reckon? It's the 12 o'clock kickoff, high noon. It used to be a ground that uh, Celtic struggled at, but in the very recent past, the, the record's actually been very good. And uh, I know that uh, Livingston gave Celtic a bit of a fright a few weeks ago in the Scottish Cup when they scored a couple at Parkhead, but uh, can't see anything other than a Celtic win by a couple of goals on Sunday. Yeah, so, I agree. I mean, Livingston haven't been good this year at all. Uh, and Celtic are going there. You know, managerless, really. He's not going to be in the dugout, as we spoke about earlier. But I think they'll go out and prove a point and, and they'll win by a couple of goals. You're still only a few yards away, though, aren't you? It's a gr I think it's a great ground. Oh, yeah, you You're not far down, away. Yeah. You can, yeah. What ground? At um, Livy. Yeah. Great ground? Oh, uh, yeah. When you think about the ground, I just think about oh, the surface. I don't mean the pitch. I mean nah. the, the stadium itself. Yeah. yeah. Well, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that actually helps the players because it's full. Mm. You look around yeah. the three sides of the atmosphere. stadium, yeah. you'll get a good atmosphere in a sort of small ground, but the pitch is awful and it's, a, sure. it's a poor spectacle. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much Pleasure. for joining Thanks us again, tonight. Yeah. Have a great weekend and uh, Andy, enjoy it up there. Good luck in your game as well. We're watching the telly tomorrow night, so yep. look for that one on the Beeb. Tomorrow night, Barry's here along with Mark Guidi. The news is coming up next and then it's going to be Zoe. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409.